Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today, I thought that we could, well, I could try out some products that I was left feeling a little iffy on just to, just to retry them, just for shits, you know? Because obviously, I haven't decluttered them, so they're still taking up free space in my house without paying rent, so let's just try it again. I feel like you guys are actually pretty zoomed in. I started that out really zoomed in. Oh, I can't bring that chair down. I just have to be shorter, okay. The first product is a product that I really, really used to love, and then I basically just changed the way that I like to do my makeup. I used to really like full coverage. Um, I wasn't as like dead set on like everything being super dewy, and one of my favorite concealers at that time was Tarte Shape Tape. So when I started getting into a lighter coverage foundation, I just found that this seemed like super full coverage in comparison. Like obviously it's a full coverage concealer, but there was other full coverage concealers um, that I could wear with sheer coverage foundations that still didn't look so off, but this was like a mask of concealer and then like super sheer foundation everywhere else. So I didn't like that look, but I'm gonna try it again today. And I'm curious because I just wonder if it has more to do with the fact that I was applying it the same way that I would apply it with a full coverage foundation, or if it's just not the foundation or the concealer for, for, for me with this. I'm gonna apply like a little bit to start because I think that was the thing with Shape Tape as well. And it was kind of um, not controversial, but like people had really varying opinions on it because the people who loved it like loved it. And the people who didn't like it were like, this is god awful. But a lot of people applied a ton of this, like so much to the point where it's like, they, they really didn't need to come out with a foundation because everyone was already kind of like making that happen themselves. I mean, I feel like that looks okay. I don't know why I felt like that looks so crazy. Maybe I'll apply a little bit more. Is that a little light? Probably. Okay, I'm gonna apply a little bit more here. I mean, I do think that this formula still is quite nice. It really, like, that was crazy, was it not? Like, it was crazy how much that was virtually the only concealer that was being used on YouTube around that time, I feel like. I'm pretty sure that's, like, their best seller. Also, I was going to do a, a video talking about, like, controversial products, but then I was like, well... I don't have the Shape Tape foundation, so is it even worth it? Okay, okay, this product, uh... <sighs> There's some products that I go into reviewing or trying because like, I know that you guys want me to, or you guys have asked me to, and I know that like, I, f I feel like it's probably not gonna be a product I like, and I try not to make that, you know, have like bias on my opinion. I try to just still go in with like an open mind, even though like deep down I'm like, mm, that's not for me. There's other products that I go into and I'm like, this is gonna be the best. My life is gonna change today. This is gonna be so great. And this was one of those products. So this is the uh, Koza Tinted Face Oil. I was really excited about this foundation. I thought that it sounded just divine for what I was looking for at the time. It's supposed to be super dewy. Um, really nice and sheer. I had had it recommended to me as well from a few people, including friends. Are they still friends? I couldn't tell you. So I'm gonna try that again. Let me give that a good shake. I have shades two and shades six. Why did I do that? Oh, Jesus, fuck, I forgot how watery that was. I feel like, honestly, I don't even need a little bit of the shade six, but maybe I'll put like a little drop in. Wow, that's so watery. I remember being like amazed by that last time. Um, I actually went back and like looked at my video as to why I didn't like this foundation. In that, I said that it was too hard to control the amount of coverage and I just didn't love it basically. I was applying it with a different sponge than I would normally use, so I'm gonna use it with my normal sponge today. But I also had um, more acne at that time. So I'm curious, and oh, that was the other thing I said. I said, it's kind of like a Glossier skin tint situation where like if you were like a perfect glowing model and you had no skin, like no skin issues whatsoever, no texture, then you'd probably love that foundation. And looking back, I'm pretty sure those are the people that recommended it to me. Um, now that my skin's a little bit clearer, I say let's give it a shot. And I'm gonna be using my normal sponge, so 
maybe that will change things for me today. Even the way that this reacts on my palette kind of like trips me out a little bit. Wow, this is so weird. I don't think you guys will be able to see it. And honestly, it's so runny that I don't know that I'll be able to hold it up. I mixed the two colors together like fully with my palette knife just now. And I feel like on the palette right here, you can kind of see that like those colors are like separating from each other after just having mixed them. Anyway, okay, let me put that on. Oh yeah, it smells like paint. That's so weird. I remember, wow, everything's flooding back to me now. I remember saying that it smells like you just like went over to like a friend's house and like they had just like recently painted and stuff like that. And that is exactly what it smells like. It's so odd. But anyways, I've held on to this the whole time. I don't know why, I, I, I don't remember like really liking it. I think I have actually, I did actually try it again after that video. I'm, 99% sure, but I obviously didn't stick with it because it's been sitting in the depths of my closet. Makeup closet. Okay, I'm having a mixed emotion moment right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my eyeballs. I... I just don't know. Let's just leave my nose like that. Maybe that's like a good look from here on out. I cannot believe how much that smells like paint. It's the weirdest thing. It's not even like, like I don't even mean that in a way that it's like an offensive smell. It's like uncanny how much it smells like, and not like even like super chemically or whatever. It's like more of a faint scent, but it's so weird. Like it's just, hmm. Yeah, how odd. <sighs> Here's the thing, guys. I just don't know that that's for me. When I look at it from far away, I'm like, hell yeah, that looks good in that mirror there. It's, this is awful, this is awful. It it sits on top of your skin. And like, it's the weirdest thing. Like I cannot even describe to you guys how liquidy this foundation is. Like it fucking just pours out of the bottle. Like you can't control the amount of product that you're taking out at all. And so because it's so liquidy, you would think that it would be like so nice and sheer on the skin that it would kind of just like blend out into nothing basically, but it's, it, no. Like I feel like you can just see it on top of the skin. I feel like even now, I do obviously have texture. I mean, you guys like see in every video, I have texture on my skin, but there's some foundations that de definitely don't emphasize it. Like it's not something where like I'm looking in like the viewfinder or the mirror every second being like, Jesus Christ, my acne scars. But this I feel like really emphasizes my acne scarring, even my pores and stuff like that. And even like, like, you know, when people like get those like lines around their lips, especially if they're like smokers or whatever, I'm, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have lines around my lips like that. And I don't, normally have like a huge issue with like pore things. Like I'm not really like a pore filler type of person because I have such dry skin that like, they don't really look that pronounced, I feel. But I just feel like this is settling into like every fine line, every pore, every amount of texture. It's just like highlighting basically. And it doesn't look good even on the parts of my skin that are smoother. I feel <laughs> in my heart. I don't know, like especially right here for some reason looks so whack to me. This is like uniquely bad. Cause it's, it's, oh, <laughs> I just could like go on and on. It's like, if you're just catching it at a glance, it's like, yeah, that looks nice. But if you're like sitting there, like really looking at it, like, you know, sometimes like you see people and you're like, you could just glance at them and be like, whatever. But then like, if you're like, maybe just like playing a card game next to them and you're just kind of like, that foundation was a choice. I feel like I would be that bitch. I feel like people would be looking at me like, okay, at least you're confident with it. Like at least you went for it, you know? That's me right now. <laughs> I like the color of it though. I feel like it matches pretty well. Maybe a little yellowy. Maybe that'll like settle over time. I don't know, we'll have to see. This is a product that I purchased really, really recently and uh, in the video that I talked about it, I kind of was like really impressed right out the gate and then it like went downhill from there. And it is this bronzer from a brand called Vesca. This brand, I should have looked it up, but I didn't. I believe that all they sell is bronzers. So that was like kind of like their initial launch was, was these bronzers. And I was really drawn to it because of the, um, the shades in particular. A lot of the times bronzer ranges 
are really, really like red toned. They don't have a good range of like colors for different skin tones kind of thing. But this one, like when I see a bronzer like this that looks like it could just be a powder for my face, like sign me the fuck up. So I was super excited about these. I liked it upon first application and then I felt like the more that I layered it because I wanted to like build up the, the color a little bit because it does have a really sheer application too. This probably isn't the color to show you with. Hold on, I have a deeper color. It's a really sheer application. So to me, in my mind, when I see a product that has, you know, like a really sheer kind of formula like that, I feel like, okay, this is meant to be built up then. You know what I mean? Like it applies nice and sheer on first kind of application because you can then customize your look. Like if you're doing a kind of no makeup makeup thing and you want like a really sheer, just kind of like one layer application, great. If you're like going out for the night and you want to like build up that color for a little bit more of a dramatic look, then like that's what you can do. So that's kind of how I feel when I see a formula like that. However, I felt like the more you built this up, the worse it got. And it's odd as well, because I mean, that's like such a, it's so sheer for being a powder that it's just, I just don't know how it gets to that point. It's just super powdery, I guess. But anyways, I'm gonna try that again. I got my big old brush here. That foundation is so bad, dude. I can't even describe. I also feel like it makes my skin look drier. Like it's literally clinging to every, everything. Like every little hair, every freaking piece of texture, every like little bit of dryness. Fuck, that's bad, okay. And actually, oddly, I feel like that shape tape is not doing it for me right now. Like, maybe I should have applied a little bit more. I mean, right now, I feel like that bronzer actually looks like, but see, what the fuck? Like, I feel like in the viewfinder, my skin looks so nice. But up close, it's such a disaster. I feel like that bronzer actually looks nice. So if I had done just that one layer and that was like a no makeup makeup situation, I think that I would be happy with that bronzer. Like I think that I've been trying to use it. Spoiler alert, before this video, I've been kind of using it since I bought it because I didn't want it to just like go to waste. And I have found that like, as long as I'm applying like one, just like one hit, one kill kind of thing, it seems to be okay. It's still a little bit of a drier looking powder and it looks a little bit, um, it just, it, it looks like a powder basically. And there are some bronzers that I feel like are sheer enough and not as powdery that end up looking not as like thick on the skin kind of thing. So they are a little bit more skin like they kind of just like meld into that foundation. I do feel like this one looks really, really beautiful and nice and diffused from afar. Up close, it's a little bit thicker kind of looking. Um, you can see that product. I find that it's fine as long as you don't layer it, but I'm just gonna layer it a little bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of the slightly deeper color. That's Kiss by Santorini, and the other one's Kiss by Rio. And I'm gonna grab like just the tiniest little bit on there. And kind of keep that concentrated over here. I'm using a brush that isn't super dense and concentrated, so I'm not gonna get a huge application of product. Yeah, I feel like that looks okay. I mean, truly nothing can compare to like how much I'm hating every second of this foundation right now. Here's my final piece with the Vesca bronzers, okay? I, <laughs> I feel similarly to the first video. I feel like the colors are really, really beautiful. Like I think they nailed the shades really well. Like they feel like a bronzer. It doesn't feel like a contour. It feels like it warms up your skin, but not in a way where it's like, holy fuck, like you clearly would never tan like that. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just a really nice kind of like warming product. I do think there's a way that you can apply it that ends up looking a little bit more natural, but I guess that my feeling is, and this is like me being a little bit critical, but because the market's so flooded, if that's your first product that you're coming out with and your only skew, then I just feel like, okay, so that's so perfect that you're confident like leading with that, that product, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like there should be no issue. <laughs> that may be too much to ask, but I just, uh, I, I guess because I have tried other formulas that I feel like do what this does, but better. Um, and even like the Fenty bronzer comes to mind for me in that regard. I just happen to like these colors more then I like the Fenty one. So I'm gonna give them like a 
to <laughs> a 6.9. Oh, I'm a child. Like, I don't want to quite give them a 7 because that seems crazy, but like a 6.5 seems like harsh for some reason. But I think I'm going to give them a 6.5. I really like the color. I just like there's something about that formula that like doesn't jive with me. Ugh, this is where this is going to go so downhill. Okay, let me put on a little bit of brow gel because this is looking kind of whack if I'm honest. Okay, now I look like a more respectful respectable human being that knows the in English language inside and out. Okay, great. I saw this online and I felt like it looked so lovely. And I think that I actually had had it recommended to me as well. I love a blush that has like a sheen to it, like a little something, you know what I mean? Not like a glitter, but just like a little bit of a shine so that it feels more like glowy. I don't love like a matte blush. That's just me. Um, so Melt came out with these blushes called Blush Light. And it's kind of like a mix between like a blush and a highlight. And online I was like, mm-hmm, that is for me. That's what's going to be my new, my new thing. And I tried it and I was like, oh wow, that's god awful. I'm pretty sure I've only ever used this once. What I didn't like about it is that I felt like the like highlight part of it was like way too intense. Like I felt like it was so strong that like why would you ever be putting that on your cheeks? Like unless you were just using it as a traditional highlight, I felt like it just wasn't, it just wasn't the look, you know? And it also felt like, I mean, Melt is a brand that's like a little bit more, how you say, funky, you know? Like everything that they do, it's not, uh, there's always like a little tweak that makes it like a little special, a little unique kind of thing. And so this is not like, your average like champagne undertone kind of thing. It's like a little bit of like a pink um, duochrome with like maybe like a little bit of orange in it kind of thing. So it ends up looking just like too much as a, as a base product for me. I'm really over the colored highlight trend. <laughs> I'm not down with it. I don't know that I ever really was down with it. I think there's like every once in a while where I see something and I'm like, yeah, okay, that looks fine. But this is just like a little too much for me. But anyways, I'm gonna try it out. This is the shade Nevermore. And I'm gonna take that on my little uh, Hakuhoto brush and I'm going to pick up like the tiniest little amount and then I tapped it off. I'm just like layering like so many products that are not happening for me right now. Oh my, oh my God. It, do, it doesn't even like look, to be honest, well, it looked like a little bit of like a cherub cheek situation. It doesn't even look that bad in the viewfinder. This is so, okay. I'm using such a little amount. Okay, just let me finish putting this on and then I'll bitch about it. You know how I said, was it the foundation that I said was uniquely horrible? Same goes. I, have never in my life felt so disrespected by blush. This is, oh, like almost when it sits on the skin a little bit, I feel like it looks slightly better, but it's so weird. I, I would like barely dip my brush into that product and I feel like it would just be like pink, like just so intense and really, really dry. Like, especially right here, like I didn't think that my skin looked that dry there, but now it's like, it just looks like so textured and so dry around this area. The highlight portion of it actually, I feel like isn't as bad as I thought it was the first time. Like I feel like it doesn't look crazy. Like it doesn't look outlandish. It feels a little bit more like how I wanted it to look. And I'm also not seeing the same, um, well, yeah, let me give you guys like a really good swatch of this. I do feel like that highlight tone, I would rather have something that's not such a pink highlight. Like it's almost like the pearl in it that's making it shiny is pink, like a colored highlight would be kind of thing. And I almost wish that that was like a neutral tone so that it would kind of balance the pigmentation of like the pink out of the blush so that it would apply a little bit more naturally. And also you could like build it up a bit more. And I think as well, it, it just wouldn't look so pigmented and I, I also feel like maybe it wouldn't look so dry. The other thing I was gonna say, even just swatching it on my hand right now, I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but it's like, it kind of gets like patchy and you just can't blend it out for some reason. Like there's just, 
this one area that I feel like it's not sticking to. It's so weird. And I felt kind of similarly when I put it on my face, I felt like it would just kind of, it was like as if your brush was like attracted to the foundation, like a magnet. And like that area where you first laid down your, your brush felt so um, pigmented. And then anywhere else around it, it just felt like I couldn't blend it out the way that I wanted it to. Overall, I would say that like, that's not nearly as bad as I remember it, but I still just like wouldn't find myself reaching for it. Like I, I love the idea of the blush light. I love the name. I think that like that's such a great product idea, <laughs> but the execution for me is like not where I need it to be. I don't know. Like I feel like there's a lot of brands that do blushes that have like a little bit of a sheen to them, but it's like super, super subtle, almost to the point where like you can't even tell. And I think that that ends up looking really beautiful. I like the idea of being able to push that highlight a little bit more. So especially for people that might have oily skin that still like to look a little glowy, but want like a powder. So they're not going in with like creams on top of like um, skin that they already feel is oily. I think that something like that would be a nice kind of alternative, but um, this is just, I mean, certainly not dry skin friendly, I'll say that. And I do feel like it's kind of like emphasizing that texture as well. But I, at this point, it's just kind of like, I'm already wearing a foundation that's emphasizing the texture and then I'm putting something over top that emphasizes the texture like even further and like a textured bronzer as well. It's not my fave, that's for sure. And I, I felt like it was kind of um, tricky as well to kind of make it look like a seamless transition into my bronzer. Like I feel like you can really clearly see like, oh, that's a fucking blush, all right. You know, like, it's just like, I, like, I feel like there's not a nice, I don't know. And also this is just like, see how pigmented that is for not having really applied much at all. And I can admit when I'm being heavy handed, I used to be fucking heavy handed with my blush. But this is like something else. Oh, I hate how many of these products I'm having to layer up. Okay, my next product is, uh, a product that I've been meaning to go back to because I feel like, again, my preferences were really different at the time that this product came out. And so I'm interested to see if I like it more now. And that is the Split Pan um, Fenty Kilowatt Highlighters. So I, my critiques of this one when it first came out is that I didn't actually like the Split Pan. Like I didn't like that there was like this, like one that was so sheer and so subtle and then one that was like so intense where it like almost looked like an eyeshadow kind of thing. Like I kind of just wished that they had like split the difference. But a lot of people were like, oh no, I like that because like, you know, for my day job, I can wear the sheer one. And then when I'm going out, I can wear the intense one. I'm gonna grab a different color really quickly, hold on. Uh, anyways, I was like, sounds fishy. I just didn't, I don't know. I just, I didn't end up liking the formula. When I swatched it, I wasn't like super impressed like right out the gate, but I wanted to like try it anyways because it was a new brand. But let me give this a little go. So I'm gonna use the color Lightning Dust here. And I'm gonna use the sheer side. Maybe I'll do the sheer side on this one and then I'll do the intense side on this one. See that? Sheer side actually isn't even that sheer to me. Um, do you guys find as well that like the sheer one seems to be like almost um, like it gets kind of like compacted where it's like you almost can't pick up any of the formula because it's so, you know when that happens? You know what I'm saying? I feel like someone somewhere gets what I'm saying. Okay. And then I'm going to use the intense side on this side. Lord help me. I'm not down with this shits anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look like I'm changing my mind on any of these products. The sheer side, um, I like from afar, kind of like everything else I'm wearing today. I feel like it looks like a really nice kind of like more subtle highlight. Up close, that's what I didn't like about this. Up close, the glitter particles for me are so chunky looking. Like I, I still can't believe how well received these highlights were to be completely honest because I, I just feel like they look so chunky. Like I, I just, I don't know, man. It looks chunky, almost like flakes, like of glitter. And actually I feel like, like this one looks like textured, like crusty, the light side. And then the more intense side, I feel like there's very clear glitter particles, but they almost look better because they just look like they're like 
visible pieces of glitter that are like sitting on top kind of thing but it doesn't look as textured if that makes sense like it looks like glitter rather than like some weird fucking like texture taking place you know however <laughs> i feel like just personal preference wise that's like a little too intense for me and i, I think always the thing for me with powder is that ultimately like i do have dry skin so that's usually a critique for me is that it, it kind of emphasizes that because it is a powder, not a cream. I think for drier skin, I could, or for oilier skin, sorry, I could see that kind of, you know, melting into the foundation a little bit more, looking a little bit more kind of skin-like. But I still wonder about that, those glitter particles, because to me they seem so gigantic in both of the formulas. And I would feel differently, I think, if like the intense one had a little bit more glitter to it and it was just kind of like a fun thing. And then the sheer side was like a really smooth powder, but I don't feel that way at all. I'm not a super fan, I'll be honest. I prefer the appearance of the sheer one from the side from far away. I prefer the appearance of the intense one <laughs> close up texturally, but I don't think I'm down with either of those, TBH. To round out this, this time, I'm gonna use this lipstick. Really my main beef with this lipstick is that it's so wildly priced. These are the Hourglass, uh, something. They're beautiful. Like the, the packaging is so stunning to me. Like I want this everywhere in my, I want this everywhere in my home, okay? <laughs> but I don't deserve it. This is why we can't have nice things. Let me look up the price quickly. Hourglass, ultra slim, high intensity, refillable lipstick. To buy this whole thing with like the outer packaging and the inner packaging, because that's their whole thing is that it's refillable. So you can kind of take that part out and swap it out for a different lipstick. For that whole thing, it's $48. For just the lipstick refill, no packaging, it's $29.50. And there is 0 0.9 grams of product. Whereas this is like a regular lipstick bullet and it's 3.7 grams of product. 0.9 grams versus 3.7 grams for 30 fucking dollars. I don't know that they're gonna change my mind on that ever. Let's just apply it. Cause sometimes there are products where I'm like, this is wildly overpriced, but it's such a beautiful formula that it's like, you know, it kind of helps. Let me kiss off a little bit of this lip balm. Everything about my makeup right now is so horrific to me. Like I feel like I crawl out of a fucking hole. Okay. This is in the shade, by the way, if you just like have money to burn one day. I mean, well, well, I do really like that color. Okay, this is what I'll say. Packaging to me is just divine. I do like the feel of the formula. Like it's really, really soft and creamy. And I like as well that, I like the size of this. Like oftentimes, uh, I feel like lipstick bullets are so big that it's like, I don't have nice majestic full lips like that. You know what I mean? I just wasn't born that way. So sometimes I feel like those lipstick bullets are so wide at the tip that it's like, it's hard to get like a nice application. I do feel like because that's so nice and slim, it just applies really nicely. Packaging, application, fantastic. It feels great. I like the look of it, but <laughs> I don't know that I could ever be convinced that there's anything that's special enough about this to warrant it being $30 for such a ridiculously small amount of product. You guys, like, I love Hourglass, you know, like, I'm, me and Hourglass, we're like this, okay? Most of their products, I'm here for. This is, like, a product that I would only purchase as, like, a gift or a gift for myself or whatever, just to, like, feel nice. I can't see myself ever being able to justify buying this for $30, you know? That's a very small amount of product. And honestly, like if you use it every day, I feel like you could use that easily in a month, if not less. And if you're reapplying as well, because this found this formula is not, um, it's a little bit creamier, you know what I mean? So it's gonna come off a little bit quicker. Um, whereas like a matte, you may not reapply as often throughout the day, but I feel like I would reapply this probably, you know, like maybe three or four times a day if I was like wanting to like keep up the appearance of it. I don't know, like I think that I was thinking I would put that on and feel like, some type of way about it. Just like somehow being able to justify that price, but I don't think anything has changed. That said, I still haven't decluttered it. I do think this whole situation is not working for me right now. 
I'm never gonna declutter this. I do love it. I love the weight of it. The packaging's beautiful. I like the application. The Tarte Shape Tape, I think I'll probably hold on to. I don't dislike it. I actually feel like I could have applied a little bit more um, because I do feel like I have some under eye circle situations that I could have stood to have a little bit more coverage for, but I think that I'd probably like it layered with my Becca under eye corrector and then just like a little bit of that over top kind of thing rather than like the triangles that we used to apply. That Koza foundation, I think I, I think I just need to say goodbye to. I think I'm ready to declutter that for, for, for cereal now. Cause this is, how can I describe this? It's almost like it's so bad that you would forget what made it so bad because it's like almost indescribable. <laughs> Never working with Koza. It's, it's just, it's, it's weird. Like it's like you put it on and it's like you can't even really put your finger on it because like just everything about it is unpleasant. Oddly, I do kind of like the paint smell. I don't know what to say, but I think that that's getting decluttered. I just don't know about that. The blush light. I really want to love it. Like, I don't know why I'm like particularly attached to this because I just want it to be different so badly every time I use it. But I think that I'm a little bit over it. You know what it is now that I'm seeing it kind of all together. I think that that highlight color, like the pearl in it seems like a little bit, um, because it's like a little bit duochrome holographic kind of feeling. That's what makes it look like almost like really muddy and like not pleasant to me. I don't like it. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna declutter that as well. Let me put that off to the side. That Fenty highlight, I just don't, I don't, I don't know that I get it, guys. I don't know that I understand the, the, the hype. I would understand if people with oily skin were like, no, like that highlight's bomb. I could see how much of a difference that could make, like depending on your skin type. But I don't think that looks good. For me, this whole look is a little bit rough. <laughs> I look like a rosy cheeked cherub, but not in a nice way. Just like a, like, like you're 27. Like you probably need to like, you know, move on from that phase kind of way. That's it. Is that everything that we used? Am I going to declutter these though? Let's be real. Like, to be honest, I might. I, I I'm like weirdly attached to my Fenty products. I don't know why. I think it's like something about the packaging or just like the whole brand like feels like a certain type of way to me. But I do feel like I could declutter those and not ever remember them again, you know? Because there are, I'm not a big fan of powder highlights regardless. You guys know this, obviously I mentioned it 12 times in every single video that I've ever uploaded, but I do have some powder highlights that I'm like, okay, all things considered, you know what I mean? Like it's it's, it looks nice for a powder highlight. So even though it's not going to ever trump ever my cream highlights, my liquid highlights, I wanna hold on to that powder highlight because I'm like, yeah, but it still is a nice powder highlight. So at some point, I don't know, maybe like I'll settle down, <laughs> start a family, enjoy powder highlights again, you know? So I don't wanna be preemptive and just tossing all that shit away. But I think that I, why am I so attached? I think I'm ready to let these go, I really am. So out of everything that I tried today, the Tarte Shape Tape is gonna stick around. The Hourglass lip Lipstick is gonna stick around, but I would never, I don't know that I could ever justify telling someone to buy that. And those three other things, I, it's time to go. It's time to get out. That's it, guys. I was gonna blow dry my hair so that it would be kind of like a nice sayonara, but I don't think that that's necessary with this whole face thing going on right now. And the truth of the matter is that I feel like too lazy to even reapply it. So I don't think I'm going to. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I'd love to know if you guys have tried some products that maybe your first impression wasn't the best with, if your thoughts have changed, if they haven't. I love to ask these questions at the end of the videos and then there's two people that apply, uh, reply and I feel really like ecstatic about that. That's it. I, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Peace out.